Hi everybody, I'm in Nashville today and there's a recording studio underneath me and I'm feeling inspired to communicate. So I'm gonna jump on and just record this. I wanna talk about the essence of my research. For those of you maybe who've never come across my work, I wanna to try to summarize it in a way that makes sense and is understandable. I started using tuning forks in 1996 and I introduced a set of them. They were the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and they came with a little instruction booklet that said you use C over the root chakra, D over the second chakra, and so on up to the crown where you use the note of B. And so I started doing that. I had a little massage therapy sort of hobby on the side of owning a restaurant and Right off the bat, I noticed very curious things about it, and it was curious enough to keep me playing with them. In fact, my clients enjoyed them so much that I, I actually stopped doing massage and just started playing with sound. And at that time, I was introduced to uh, the use of color and of music, and I set up a practice where I had I got colored light bulbs in every single color of the rainbow and I got a really great stereo with a subwoofer under the table and I would do these very intricate like three hour sessions where I would introduce color in, and tuning forks and music. I played different musical selections and that was really neat. It was fun to play around with all that stuff. But then uh, the lamp broke and I had to move my office to a place where I couldn't have the subwoofer. It was no fun without the subwoofer. So I, I just ended up with the tuning forks and I've been using those for the last 22 years. And in the course of playing with them, really just experimenting with them, I've made some really interesting discoveries and discoveries that have been really hard to understand, that have been really hard to uh, put into a framework or a context of understanding because they are so peculiar. I discovered that the sound would interact with the body's sounds. You know, we don't necessarily hear anybody's body. I mean, sometimes you might think that somebody can hear your heart beating, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that our bodies are in motion. Everything in us is moving constantly and at its own rhythm. Our heart has a rhythm. Our adrenals have a rhythm. Our digestion has a rhythm. You know, maybe yours has been going too slow or too fast, right? Um, our ovaries have a rhythm. Our brain, you know, and this has all been measured. Uh, we can track your heart rate variability. We can measure your brain waves. And, you know, your, your brain waves are electrical and they're generated inside your skull. And so when you get an EEG, that is, you know, those have already come through your skull. Like, they don't stop there. They, the, those waves propagate. So everything in motion, these waves are propagating off of our bodies. And, you know, we've all had the experience of getting a bad vibe off of somebody, right? Or a good vibe, or even in spaces, you know, they make us feel a particular way because there's a particular resonance of sound, inaudible sound bouncing around in the cavity of different spaces. We feel different because we resonate differently in different spaces. So <clears throat> everybody kind of gets that vibes exist. And, uh, and so the tuning forks were this really interesting way to actually read these vibes because a tuning fork, now mostly what I use is 174 Hertz uh, because I found it to be the most useful. I've, I've tried a lot of different frequencies and, uh, and that one, there's just something about it that because it produces overtones and undertones and technically an infinite amount. So it's really in the inaudible ranges. But these overtones and undertones interact with the emissions off the body. And, and in that intersection of waves is information. And I've had this sort of odd ability ever since I started playing with them to encounter dissonance, to encounter, you know, it not sounding like a C anymore. It sounds like a C sharp. And, um, and to understand what that means. So when the tone goes sharp, you know, it's alarm or pain, it's intensity. Uh, sometimes the sound will disappear altogether and that's something that's really depleted and really low. But what's really cool about introducing a tuning fork into the vibrational emissions of the body is that when the body hears its own noise, it recognizes that. And it's, in, you know, it seems to me like it's scanning for a clean file that it can then resonate with. And I think we're really interacting on the level of DNA. Uh, you know, I have a 
term that I use called energenetics, which is the tone of the song of our DNA. It's our, it's our inherited tonal expression. And a lot of research is coming out that's saying that we are affected by the experiences of our ancestors, right? Epigenetics. Um, and, but that's really a very a chemical term. We talk about DNA and we think of it all chemically, um, but I'm looking at it sonically, tonally, rhythmically, which is really what it is on a very fundamental level. It's music. And essentially we're either, you know, making music because everything in our body is in flow and moving properly and in its right rhythm, or we're making noise because, you know, something is flat somewhere, something is sharp somewhere, something is not even playing somewhere else. And, you know, we have an inner orchestra and that inner orchestra can be brought in tune into its right rhythm, into its proper flow, into its, uh, what I call it, sweet spot, um, just through tuning forks, just through introducing tuning forks. And the way that we do it is we just find where the noise and the signal is. And I work up to six feet away in what is the hypothetical human biofield. And, you know, this is, a lot of people when they hear about this, we've been really trained to think of anything that has to do with energy or fields as being woo woo, right? It sets off people's woo bells when I say I use tuning forks in the energy field um, because we don't really have a scientific explanation for that. And so when I went looking for a scientific explanation for the phenomenon that I was encountering, because not only was I encountering noise in the signal, you know, five feet away from the body, but I was also encountering a sense of resistance like the fork was hitting into something and sticking there and of course I could override that I'm just waving a tuning fork through the air but if I'm being really sensitive and going slow I would find these sticky spots and I discovered that there was energy that was trapped in this charge like energy like I don't know to this day I still don't know what it is I hypothesize that it is a bioplasma that it is a magnetic field that it's free ions and electrons that it's electricity ultimately um, but we you know when it comes right down to it we really don't even understand electricity and this is the topic of my next book and my next round of research because my next book is called raise your voltage and it's all about increasing your health your well-being your vitality not through eating green things and doing yoga but rather from being aware of yourself as an electrical entity and like a battery and what i find is is that most people discharge way more than they recharge you know that they're running too high and too fast and too low and too slow and everybody's energy is all over the place and they're trying to take supplements or drugs or pills or you know to help them to feel better but but really the answer is in managing your electric energy and learning where you light up the things that make you go ah that like raise your battery and the things that make you go Ugh, and and lower your battery and when you start just thinking in terms of a battery it just gets a lot easier to have energy vitality you know all things like chronic fatigue like epstein Barr, uh, you know lime all of these things that are out there and you know I, i've had stuff like that in the past for sure i got ehrlichiosis which is like the worst kind of lime and it knocked me on my feet for a long time uh i think sound played a big part in me recovering from that so um most people are you know giving and not receiving and and so their battery gets low so i want to i'm writing this book about keeping your battery high and what you know what that looks like but we want to understand the science behind it and so you know what is electricity i went to ask this question in my research and you know just one simple thing is that we've been told that electricity is the flow of electrons along a wire and that's what most people believe but when you scratch a little deeper you discover that electrons don't even move they just kind of hang out and jiggle what is actually moving along the wire is the electric force and it is a it is a field that travels on the outside of the wire i mean did you know that i didn't know that and then when you start to dig deeper it all becomes so incredibly confusing and most people will say we don't understand electricity so you know answering these questions about what i'm finding in the field has actually turned out to be this really big rabbit hole uh, that's just you know questions lead to more questions and you know not always to answers but we certainly have 
an interesting time asking the question. So, you know, what is the biofield? I don't know. I think it's electricity, but I don't know what that is. I'm pretty sure it's electricity. So we need to define that. So I'm going to start a podcast soon where I'm going to bring in all of these experts on electricity, people who are experts in the standard model, people who are experts beyond the standard model. Um, you know, I've even maybe have somebody who worked in a power plant. So kind of the nuts and bolts of it, uh, people who understand subtle energy. Uh, what's that, right? Um, so there's, there's, a, there's still a lot to learn. Um, but the essence of what I've learned so far is that every emotion has a particular frequency signature and that when the tuning fork is in a place where that emotion is held, the fork sounds that way. You can hear it in the overtones and the undertones. Like depression has an undertone and it tends to sit off the left shoulder. So and when I stick a fork in there and I hear the fork, it go, Mm. then I can feel that that is a tone that is expressing in your system. But when your body hears that, it goes, wow, that's too low. And it will actually interact with the tuning fork and bring itself up to a more harmonious expression. It, you know, the tuning fork sings la and the body goes, Bleh. <laughs> and after a little while, the body starts going la back. And, and then the energy that was stuck there, like a low pressure system, now I can actually move that energy with a chain fork. I can hook into it and I can drag it and I can drop it into the center. And there's a very tangible effect and a very clear change in tone when that energy goes in and integrates. Very interesting thing. So then I asked the question, is sound magnetic? Because it appeared that the tuning fork was producing an electromagnetic charge that was interacting with the electromagnetism of the body and actually able to, to guide it. And we know that magnetic fields guide electric currents. So if what we're moving is the magnetic field of the body, it's shifting the way the electricity is running. And so if you have pain somewhere, you have too much voltage running through those wires. It's beyond the carrying capacity, the comfortable carrying capacity. And so what we do is we hook into that, we find that sharp tone, that stuck charge, and use the tuning fork, the vibrating tuning fork, to bring it into center. And when we bring things to the midline of the body, they appear to disperse sort of back into the whole system. And, you know, I've regularly gotten people who've been in a pain level of uh, eight or nine or not 10, but soon, <laughs> um, and taking them down to a one or a zero in 20 minutes, simply by shifting this energy. I've had people who had, you know, no range of motion, they could only raise their arm this high and had pain 20 minutes, and it will relax because we shifted the energy flow. So, so we can move energy around uh, we can hear it and, and know what emotion it is, but we can, I can also, and my students can too, I have some wonderful practitioners who are really learning this. It takes some time to learn the language of it because each sound has a particular quality and once you know it, it becomes part of your language. Uh, I've been able to diagnose, not necessarily in a medical way, um, but I can certainly hear different organs sounding off and, and have an impression of what's going on with them. Uh, I've learned that arthritis produces a sort of grainy quality. So if I'm off somebody's shoulder or hip and I hear that grainy quality, kind of like almost going into bone on bone, it makes that sound, right? So everything that's healthy, even things like a digestive rhythm. We had a student in a recent class who, when she was being worked on, I could hear that her digestive rhythm, it was it was high and tight. And I was like, you know, is your digestion slow and not good? And she said, absolutely. And so we really worked with the intention of tuning into that rhythm of, uh, instead of, you know, the good squishy kind of thing you want to have down there, just shifting it back to its factory settings. And, you know, I've healed all my digestive issues from just a lot of tuning. I used to have everything that you could have wrong in your gut and couldn't have gluten, couldn't have this and that. I can eat anything now. I got great digestion because I have coherent energy and a strong digestive fire. So, and that's what people are missing. You know, this whole thing with chronic fatigue and all that people's energy is kind of all spread out. You know, we take these hits and we're under all this stress and life really sucks the life out of you. And what, what working with the tuning forks in the field does is it actually brings that life back. 
it's it's anti-entropic or syntropic and and makes you kind of age backwards as you continue to receive it so so that's the essence of what I've been doing, what I figured out and where I'm going. And the next stage is, um, you know, really seeking to understand electricity better and also getting these experts to weigh in on, you know, what it is I'm doing and how they would define it. So we're going to be, you know, moving in a direction of hopefully better and better understanding as we go along. OK, thanks for joining. Checking out uh, check out some of my other videos, too, while you're here. OK, take care.